Now we're on the hangar deck of the New Orleans, and the helicopter has been lowered on the elevator. We'll be rolled off. And then there will be a little ceremony welcoming the flyers back from the moon. Yep, that is the hangar deck. It is here on this deck that NASA has established the mobile quarantine facility for the astronauts. They'll spend two days in there while the ship steams northward toward the pilot of American Samoa. Of course, from there, the astronauts will go on by plane back to Houston. But both on the ship and on the plane, they'll be staying in a sort of a modified trailer arrangement called a mobile quarantine facility. One NASA... He wouldn't get some last-minute earthly illness from someone on board the recovery ship and transfer those Earth germs to the astronauts while he's checking them out for possible moon germs. Now the recovery helicopter just about back in the right spot for the astronauts to be allowed out of the helicopter. And down these stairs, and these are historic stairs, though they may not appear to be. I've felt the tread of every man who's ever walked on the surface of the moon. The hatch opening now, and here they come, the Apollo 14 astronauts, waving, obviously glad to be back, glad it's over, looking forward to getting all the way home once again. Posing for pictures now, Ellen Shepard, Ed Mitchell, and Stuart Russo. Yeah, they do it, yeah. They look great. They do. Look beautiful. NASA physician entering the quarantine facility with them. And a NASA physiologist outside decontaminating the area by spreading a special disinfectant along the area on which they have walked. Well, this could be the last time we have a quarantine facility uh, in use. Uh, the NASA doctor in the mobile no quarantine facility will spend about three and a half hours checking over each of the astronauts later today. He conducted physicals on them shortly before their mission, and he'll compare the data. The captain of the ship, Robert Moore. Gentlemen, on behalf of the officers and crew of the ship, on behalf of all Americans, welcome back to Earth especially welcome back to the USS New Orleans. In thanks for your safe return, our chaplain will now offer a prayer. Oh Lord God, your blessings of safety to astronauts Shepard, Rusa, and Mitchell, and success to their mission, stirs worldwide gratitude and rejoicing. Bless the success of our technical progress to the enrichment of our souls. Grant our leaders and society as a whole, wisdom to translate the knowledge gained from this great creative experience into the service of all mankind and to the honor of your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Dredio. Now my pleasure to present Admiral Hayward in charge of Task Force 130, the recovery force. Admiral Hayward. Behind you, hanging from the overhead in a position that unfortunately you can't see at the present time, is a massive banner that stretches almost completely across the width of the hangar deck. And it's probably 10, 15 feet long. And it says, All America welcomes Apollo 14 astronauts Shepard Rusa Mitchell. And these words, as brief as they are, represent the deep feelings of all the people who have made up your recovery team. We are just tremendously impressed with the precision that this entire Apollo 14 mission has been carried off 
uh, and tremendously impressed with how precise this successful splashdown and recovery has gone. Your accomplishments and exploits over the last week and a half have re-excited men everywhere around the world, and they have reaffirmed that men can still perform miracles if they'll pull together in the same direction. And we're just tremendously impressed. What you have done has uh, proven once more that men have the skill and the technical capability and the courage, the initiative, the stamina, and is willing to take risks, many of which he cannot even fully define in his search for new horizons to conquer, and particularly in his peaceful conquest of our universe. I can assure you that nobody, nobody has a greater pride in what you have done or is more elated in your being back here than the hundreds of people who have made up your recovery team. The men of the United States Navy, the United States Air Force, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the many civilians that are here representing industry and companies of our great country. We all collectively are tremendously proud and honored to have been provided the opportunity by you to play a small part in this just eminently successful mission. And we applaud the magnificence and the way you have pulled it off and we salute you as fellow Americans. Now I'd like to introduce to you a man whom you all know, Major General Stevenson, who is Director of Operations from the Office of uh, Manned Space Flight NASA Headquarters in Washington, General Stevenson. Gentlemen, on behalf of NASA, the Office of Manned Space Flight, and I'm sure I speak for the astronauts, I want to express appreciation for the recovery job that was done by the New Orleans captain and crew and the officers and men of the helicopter squadron six. Uh, in the business we're in where there's little room for error, uh, it's obvious that their emphasis on excellence and achievement made them worthy of a part of the Apollo team. Al and Ed and Stu, you've had a long trip to the moon. You overcame some major difficulties. You had a lot of nagging minor problems. And you whipped all of them and you brought off a huge success for the mission. And I want to tell you that the program in the country was never more sorely in need of a successful mission than the one that you brought off. I wonder if the three of you would uh, You'll probably be asked a thousand times about all the problems that went wrong. How about telling about your most exciting moments, your most rewarding moments on your way to the moon? Okay, let me start off. Uh, General Stevenson, thanks very much for your, for your comment. And Tom, thanks a lot for your kind words. Sure, it's nice to be back home again. Appreciate the, the pickup, Captain Moore. Appreciate your kind words. You're glad to see the Mayor of Houston here and some other distinguished guests. And uh, let me re-echo your words about that fantastic recovery. Listen, uh, we were we were still trying to get ready to get out when the when the boys were ready to have us. I don't think we've had a recovery as uh, handled as efficiently and as speedily and as uh, neat and clean as that one. We were just tickled with it and uh, we appreciate it very much. Of course, uh, we do come kind of close to the target area, but that may be, may be incidental. <laughs> we have had uh, a terrific flight, as the general points out. It's been, it's been uh, just completely super all the way around. We've had a lot of fun. We've had some problems. But uh, I don't think there's any question about the fact that for me, the most thrilling moment is right now, not only because uh, we're back from a trip to the moon, but also because I'm back home. Yes. I think Al has said all that can be and need be said, but I would like to repeat the thanks to Admiral Hayward and Captain Moore, General Stevenson, for your uh, very kind words. I think we have had a very successful trip. We all enjoyed it immensely. We had a good time doing it. And it was uh, uh, worth all those little moments of doubt when the problems arose just to conquer them and be back. And I would like to thank uh, this recovery team for a beautiful recovery and especially might as well 
bring in our Moker team that's done such a good job of getting us here in the first place. Thank you, gentlemen. Just echo the sentiments, uh, my own personal thanks to everybody involved in the recovery. You know, in the last nine days, I've seen some rather fantastic sights, uh, but I guess uh, right up among the top of them is the sight of this carrier today when we looked out of the window of the hatch. It's very good for an Air Force man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, speaking from an Air Force type, uh, it's, uh, it's a real privilege to fly Navy, and uh, we thank all of you. I'm going to take you back a couple of days. Uh, did the surface of the moon uh, look like about what they had briefed you on uh, before you took off on the mission, or were there some uh, changes from what you'd expected? Well, actually, from the standpoint of plan form of the target area, General, uh, it looked exactly like what we'd been practicing with. As soon as the vehicle uh, pitched over for the final stages of the, of the approach, I think Ed and I both uh, simultaneously recognized the target area and recognized that the, the guidance and steering and the trajectory were right right in there on the target area. Uh, I had originally planned to land a little bit south of the targeted point because the maps and the uh, relief contours showed that to be a little more level, a little more smooth. But uh, in fact, it did not appear to be appropriate, so we shifted uh, a couple hundred feet to the north and landed in an area that was smoother. Uh, it was on a little slope, but after we got out and looked around, we realized there really wasn't any level ground around there. Uh, so uh, I think that, uh, that we landed in a good spot, and uh, we certainly had a lot of good rocks to, to collect while we were there. Was the, tip up cone, the trip up Cone Crater uh, rougher or uh, uh, rockier than you'd anticipated? Uh, I think it just took us longer. Uh, we had no difficulty at any time, either in, uh, in navigating around the larger rocks, the boulders, and going up the slope. Uh, not only uh, with uh, the uh, uh, vehicle, but also without it. We took the vehicle all the way with us, all the way up. We had no problems in navigating, it's just that there was so many interesting things to do. It took us so long to get there, it was just a matter of running out of time. We had a planned time to come back in, as you know. And it's uh, just a matter of uh, not having enough time to do all the things we wanted. Uh, Al, today you were the uh, last man out of the command module. You were also the first American in space. Uh, you have been the earliest and the latest, one of the shortest and qualifying for one of the longest, certainly the shortest. Uh, there's some of your friends here that say you can't harken back that far, but uh, how about giving a comparison between the, the first Mercury mission and the one you just came back from? Well, General, frankly, I'm not really a student of history. Uh, as you point out, it was a long time ago, and it was a great ride. This last one was a great ride, too. and. Uh, also, fortunately, it will not be the last ride. There will be other, other flights going, space flights going to the moon and uh, space laboratory and shuttle and so on. But this was a great thrill. There's no question about it. Uh, I would like to say that, uh, that I've worked with a lot of very talented people in my life, and a lot of very dedicated people, but never have I worked with two more talented and dedicated people than I've got in here with me right now. Ed and Stu, I think, did a tremendous job, not only in the training program, uh, but also during the flight, and their their uh, diligence and their uh, their hard work certainly contributed to the success of the mission to a tremendous degree. And I want to take this opportunity to publicly thank them for doing a fantastic job. Well, thank you. Al. We had a great leader to work with. That helped a lot. If I could uh, say again that we welcome you back. I've got to return to the bridge to uh, recover your space. Craft, but uh, Admiral will continue, and uh, Admiral has a few questions about one of our lookouts spotted that coming down, and we found it on their flight deck. So maybe you can explain to the Admiral about it. Okay, right, everybody says it's got to be the longest six hour in the world. <laughs> I understand it doesn't hook or slice up there. Is that yeah, right? straight as a die. <laughs> We hope to have the president on the line to you in the next few minutes. Also, uh, later on, perhaps we'll get your wives and family on the telephone with you. That'd be fine, Tom. Thank you. I'd like to ask Stu a question. Uh, I've often wondered what uh, the Lone Ranger is feeling like as he's going around the moon up there all by himself uh, with people on both sides, but there you are alone. Well, actually, uh, 
I was so busy that uh, you didn't really have time to consider the fact that, that you're by yourself, and I'd also spent so many hours in the simulator by myself that uh, I think I was well prepared for it. And by the time I got to the end of that first day in lunar orbit, I was uh, well tired and uh, trying to get as much sleep, uh, how little it was, before the next day that I really didn't have time to, to think, to dwell too much on, uh, on being alone. I, uh, I've always liked to fly by myself anyway. I've always considered more than uh, one seat in an airplane too many, so uh, I think I was uh, well suited for that, 